Hi everyone, this is Jim. Welcome to this postmortem of my Blitz game number 970. My opponent uh, started off with e4, and I went with uh, d5, trying to play a Scandinavian defense. And uh, he bypassed my pawn by pushing on, although the, the normal move and, and the best move is just to go ahead and take that pawn. But he pushed on, and actually I've seen this more than once in uh, Blitz games, so I, I paused here for a bit uh, in the post, in my evaluation after the game to uh, consider what was best. And uh, I think Bishop f5 is the best idea here. Uh, you can see it's mentioned in the database. There's not many games that have been played in these lines, but the chess engine liked it. And uh, it has the idea of playing a French defense, but uh, but getting the uh, bishop outside the pawn chain. So it seems like uh, you get kind of the best of both worlds with a move like that. Um, but anyway, in this game, I played uh, e6. So we just directly go into a... Uh, a mainline French defense this is known as the advanced variation of the French defense. And we play the main moves for a while here. I attack the center, he defends it. I attack again, he defends. And then I bring my queen out to continue the attack. So at this point, there's a number of uh, choices that white has. You can see the most popular move is actually uh, a3, which is not something I see that often in practice. Maybe people don't who play this don't actually know this line. Um, and then I have the choice of pushing on with c4. You see that's the second choice here, playing some developing move like bishop to d7 or knight to h6. Knight to h6 is a funny move um, because he could just snap it off, but I guess uh, white doesn't really want to give up the bishop pair at such an early stage. And, uh, and it does look at some interesting squares over here on the king side. Anyway, um, he didn't play that way. Um, other moves that I've seen, well, bishop e2 is a simple developing move that uh, white can play here. Or white can play the uh, the tricky move, um, bishop to d3. And this often leads to a gambit. So And it sets a trap. So uh, I see this most often in practice uh, in my blitz games. And even in over-the-board games, I've had this played against me. Um, just setting up this little trick. If I take, which taking once is the... Uh, main reply. But if you keep taking, then uh, you end up with an exposed queen here, and white can exploit that with this little trick, with the check and winning the queen. So that loses. <laughs> so you have to stop taking after you exchange once. And then uh, a common continuation here is bishop to d7 to block the check, and then you're really threatening that pawn. And then this is where the gambit comes in after bishop d7. Uh, White can just castle, and this is the milner Barry gambit. He's just offering this pawn as a gambit. It's probably not quite sound, or uh, white doesn't get quite enough compensation, but white gets some interesting play there, so uh, it's worth checking out um, if you haven't seen it before. Or um, white can also just move this bishop again and defend the pawn soundly, so white has a couple of choices there, and, uh, and that is all fine for white. So a number of ways that white can play this position, and uh, he didn't choose any of those moves. He went uh, queen to b3, just offering the queen trade, and the chess engine says I should really just take the queen off right away. Thinks this is good for uh, black, and um, and maybe, maybe uh, well, the problem is the, the move I played. I played c4, trying to provoke white into trading queens, and he went along with it, but he could have uh, uh, and after that, we're out of the book, so we can look at it on this page. He could have just uh, retreated his queen. <laughs> and then that, that leaves me looking a bit funny with my pieces over here. But he's got this solid wall, which is now uh, going to be difficult to undermine now that I've locked it up. So that this position is actually good for white. Uh, so that was a, a mistake, pushing that pawn forward. Although it worked out okay in the game because he responded the way I expected and just uh, took my queen off. And now black is fine in this position. And I have ideas of playing on the queen side, pushing this pawn forward. And I have an open line for my rook. So we get some normal developing moves for a while. He goes uh, bishop e2. Well, I throw in this f6. It's often um, important to get this move in when you get the chance. So uh, you want to undermine that center. And here's a chance where uh, it's, if I take the pawn now, he'll have to take back with a piece. He can't... Uh, can't use his f-pawn to recapture there, so I can maybe try and isolate a pawn on the uh, on the e5 square. So to avoid that, he takes, and um, then he castles. That's that's fine. I develop my bishop. 
he goes bishop to g5 and I get castled. And now that the f-pawn has been traded off, my rook defends the knight, which is handy in case he ever takes. I can take back with a piece. So he continues the knight bd2. And now I make a, another slight mistake. Um, e5 is, well, I think it leads to a playable position, but the, the chess engine really prefers white after that. So uh, what it wants to do is play um, b5. And then maybe with the idea of following up with b4 and creating weaknesses over here on c3. And even after this b-pawn is traded off, you've got a second b-pawn here that can follow up and uh, go after that same weak spot in white's position. And so, uh, yeah, this is an interesting position where, um, you know, I just sort of uh, naturally want to try and create play in the center, but uh, creating play on the wing when you have a uh, locked up center is a very standard thing to do. And this pawn here, although it's a weak pawn, it's solidly defended by my light squared bishop and it's uh, back in my camp so it's easy to defend so it's not that much of a weakness. So I could view this as just a fixed center and start uh, playing on the queen side and trying to create some weaknesses here. I think it, it makes a lot of sense. Anyway, I pushed in the center instead and, and uh, so white is a little better after this. Let's uh, just continue on. All these trades seem to be fine up until this point when he played b3. That's just a mistake. Um, continuing here with knight f3 or even uh, rick to e1. These are all natural developing moves. Knight f3 is especially, is especially attractive because it gains a tempo on my bishop. And, um, you know, if he starts to put pressure on this pawn, I might get in trouble, but probably he's going to, you know, do something like this, put his ricks on the uh, on the E and D files and, and have a fine position. So I think uh, this position should be good for white. That's the uh, evaluation of the chess engine as well. So that's the way to play this. Instead, um, he went B3, trying to undermine these annoying pawns over here. I guess he's trying to activate his bishop. And I noticed that he was taking and uh, threatening to win a pawn there, but I didn't notice that he had hung, hung his C-pawn. And I, I later I, I managed to win that pawn through some tactics, but uh, the simplest way to get an advantage in this game would have been to take it immediately. <laughs> so uh, yeah, he can, uh, his rook is under fire, so he needs to move the rook. Maybe uh, that's part of what I didn't notice other than not noticing it was hanging. So he doesn't actually even have time to win a pawn. Um, and let's see, and then I continue with b5. That's that's the recommendation. So after he trades, I can take back with a pawn as happened in the game. So b5 is what I played for that same reason, but I could have grabbed the pawn first. Uh, and let's see, well, the other line here after I take the pawn is he could actually try and win a pawn here and give up the exchange. But, uh, you know, after after uh, he takes back here, it's my turn to move. And, um, you know, I can just trade this off. I mean, he gets to take back with check, but doesn't appear to do a whole lot of damage. And, um, I mean, effectively, since he's got one pawn holding back two pawns, he's effectively got an extra pawn. So he's got three pawns against two. He has the bishop pair and he has, and he's down the exchange. So maybe it's a playable position for white still, but, uh, but definitely black has the advantage. Um, so instead of grabbing the pawn, I played the b5 here. Let's see, he goes rick, rick f to c1. So now the c pawn is defended. I play bishop to d7. Um, oh, there's, there's still, um, even though that pawn is defended, there's still a weakness here along this diagonal, which I could exploit by playing the move uh, b4. That's the chess engine suggestion in this position. That's also quite a good move for black. But uh, anyway, I just uh, wanted to get my pieces in the game. I needed to develop this bishop so my rook could get involved. So I played the bishop to d7. Also wanted to get the bishop on this diagonal looking at his king side. Let's see, he played f4, kicking my bishop back. And then knight to f3. So he got his knight back to a good square. And then uh, I played bishop f c5 check. Actually, um, the chess engine prefers a, a different move order prefers knight e4 first, and then, uh, and then if he plays b4 to prevent me from playing bishop c4, then I bring my rook, well, let me put it on the board, it's getting complicated. Say I play knight e4 with the threat of the bishop coming to uh, c5, giving a check and maybe the knight coming in here. Uh, so that's my threat. 
and, and if he plays b4 to prevent it, then I have this move, and now I've got uh, the knight and the rook piling up on this pawn, and he can't uh, he can't actually defend it. So that's also uh, pretty good for uh, black. Let's see, I gave the check right away. He went king h1, and now I should still follow up with knight e4 because uh, the knight from e4 can come to f2 and start uh, start that annoying checking and discovered check sequence with the bishop and knight. This is uh, one of those times it works pretty well. Uh, but instead, I was still focused on getting all my pieces, and I play rook a1, rook a8, rather, um, kicking his bishop back. Let's see, he played, um, where did we go here? Yeah, he played bishop to f1. I went um, h6, kicking his other bishop, and he just traded the knight off, and now I don't have that knight e4 option anymore, so um, that still would have been an a interesting way to play. Anyway, he continued here with g3. This pawn was under fire. I went uh, rook to e3, getting my rook into his camp. I mean, I think my position is pretty good in any case, but um, but it wasn't... Uh, I, I had better. I could have gotten a stronger position. Uh, let's see, he goes bishop g2. That's reasonable. We go bishop c6. That's where I've been wanting to put it for a while. And uh, I'm defending here. Although here, actually... Um, bishop to a3 is an interesting move. Put the bishop on this square, uh, and if he wants to defend the uh, pawn, then he's going to have to displace his rooks. And then once the rooks are displaced, I can double on the e-file. Well, I mean, let me put that on. It just means that the rooks are not coordinating on the back rank anymore, or on the second rank. They're, they're a little bit hard to coordinate with that bishop there, and then I can bring a rook over and double on the e-file. So that's pretty strong. Let's see, I went bishop c6 here. He went knight d4. And uh, yeah, knight d4 was a mistake. And finally, this is a point where I where I spot the opportunity. Uh, I spot a tactic and I take it. So rick takes c3 was the top choice of the uh, chess engine. So it was a good tactic. And surprisingly enough, knight takes b5 was his answer. And that was also the top choice. I was thinking that uh, he would just trade rooks or take my rook. I mean, I was attending it as a sacrifice. He just takes my rook, and then I take his knight. Then he drops back, and um, I'll continue the exchange. And at the end of the day, I have a bishop and a rook, and he's got a uh, bishop and a rook. So the material is even. The bishops serve the same color. I just have an extra pawn. But, uh, well, what I didn't take into account, that the chess engine says, you know, I should play d4 here, and it says this is just a completely winning position for black, and, and and white has to avoid this at all costs. So it was better to give up material and to give up a piece rather than go into this position. And the problem is I've got this pair of passed pawns, and he can't even reduce it to one because I'll just take back. And after this pushes on to the uh, uh, sixth rank, it's, it's, it's already unstoppable at this point. The evaluation is like nine points in my favor. So... So this is, uh, if he had played the way I expected him to play and the way I thought was best, it actually lands him in a completely hopeless position. So what he played, knight b5, was actually an interesting try to uh, keep the game going. So he's down, uh, he's down a piece, but he gets some pawns in this case, and he can try and get a hold an endgame. So let's see. At this point, uh, the knight is hitting my rook. So... Uh, and if I take the knight, then he'll take my rook. So um, I went ahead, and I no longer have the, with my bishop over here, I would no longer have that uh, that skewer that I was counting on to get material back. So taking taking with check is the way to get out of this situation, and then, uh, then taking the knight. So I am a piece up, but he starts to reap some pawns here. He gets to take this one with check, and I step towards the center, and then he grabs another pawn, and uh, I drop my bishop back here. I decided it was simplest just to reduce the material down to rook and bishop versus rook rather than uh, giving him, allowing him to keep that bishop and continue to cause trouble. And the trade is forced because uh, the bishop is pinned. So he goes ahead and trades to um, bring my pawn over here where his pawn can block it and also give him a passer. So he's got some chances that he can play for. And, uh, and he does. He pushes the a-pawn forward. And, um, you know, I, I bring my rook around to stop it. 
but uh, this is just uh, winning for black. It just takes a bit of maneuvering. Um, I went bishop d4 in the game. I was thinking afterwards maybe bishop b4 would have been better to stop his uh, rook from coming here. But of course he can bring his rook in here to attack my bishop, so I don't know if it makes a whole lot of difference. Anyway, he brought his rook in and I had to find a way. I'm trying to get my king to this square to attack his, uh, his loose pawn over here. And um, let's see, I went uh, bishop to b6 to chase his rook away. That's right, he dropped his rook back and I can bring my king forward now. And then the king from here can wander down to this square and attack this pawn. So I'm in position to attack both of his uh, extra pawns on the queen side. Uh, let's see, he brings his king forward. I go bishop back to d8, goes g4. I bring my king in and he goes f5. And, um, you know, I was wondering if this was the right approach, but, uh, well, I, you know, I looked at this with the chess engine. It's kind of a long line, um, it, but if the king comes over to attack the pawns, it still doesn't work. Let's see, I'll grab the pawn over here. So it's just bishop and pawns against pawns. And, uh, you know, he can try and force my bishop away like this, pushing his pawns forward. Um, but I can stay on this diagonal and, um, and eventually trade everything off like this. But uh, at the end of the day, my king is in front of my passed pawn. He can't get over and stop it. So that's still simply a win for black. So so basically he, that doesn't work either. So he tried pushing on with his F pawn. We got the exchange of rooks. And, uh, and then I had to do a little more maneuvering to try and uh, get his king away from this pawn so I could uh, uh, take his pawn and then start my uh, start my C pawn rolling. And uh, well, he did this interesting thing here. This kind of trick can work sometimes. He's trying to use this pawn or this pawn to shield my bishop, prevent it from stopping the other pawn from uh, queening. So he, he goes forward with a sacrifice. I take and then he pushes. Now the sacrifice in the long run is going to lead to me getting a queen. But uh, if he gets a queen first, then it, it can work. But um, uh, when he pushes forward, you know, if he, he needs to uh, distract this pawn because my pawn on g7 was ready to stop his h pawn, so he needs to get rid of that. And then he can start uh, pushing his h pawn forward. But I just go to uh, f5 with my pawn and open up that diagonal for the bishop so he has no way of getting a queen. So after a couple more moves, he decided to resign. Yeah, let's see, I played g2. That was the actual end of the game. So uh, interesting game. Hope you guys enjoyed it, and I will see you next time. Bye.